So next we're going to talk about the third region, the third area where diuretics act upon. So we have um, touched upon the proximal convoluted tubule A and then B was the descending loop of Henle. So C is ascending loop of Henle. Um, so the cells of the ascending tubular epithelium are not permeable to water. So we have active reabsorption of sodium and potassium and also chloride so which is facilitated by a sodium potassium chloride trans co-transporter so we'll have like something like this um, a co-transporter here so that it get, gets um, transported and both magnesium and calcium and they will enter the interstitial fluid so here's the interstitial fluid via the paracellular pathway okay so we have the paracellular pathway and that's where so basically we have the filtrate in the tubal lumen and then we have the the apex the apical membrane okay and then we have the here the tubal cell tight junction okay here's a transcellular route or route and then we have the interstitial fluid and and then you have the capillary endothelial cell and then here we have the vasolateral membranes and here is the peritubular capillary okay peritubular capillary the the blood okay so we have blood and this is the urine part okay blood and urine so here in the mid in the between we have cells so we have um magnesium and the calcium entering the interstitial fluid via the paracellular root okay paracellular root or route so the ascending loop is therefore a diluting region of the nephron okay a diluting region of the nephron and about 25 percent of the tubular sodium chloride returns to the interstitial fluid okay returns to the interstitial fluid Okay, so the chloride goes back here, interstitial fluid. Okay, and and this helps maintain the high osmolarity. Okay, maintains high osmolarity. And so as we know that the ascending loop of Henle is a, a main spot. Okay, a major spot for salt sodium chloride reabsorption. So therefore, drugs affecting this site such as the loop diuretics okay loop diuretics have the greatest diuretic effect okay so that's this is where the the loop diuretics have the greatest diuretic effect because the as the ascending loop of henley is uh, the main spot for salt reabsorption so the the drugs that affect this side will have the greatest diuretic effect okay so that means that since that the loop diuretics um they they mainly act on the loop of henley so they will have the greatest diuretic effect so next is the distal convoluted tubule so d is dct distal convoluted tubule and again the cells of the dct are also impermeable to water they are not penetrable to water and 10 percent of the filtered sodium chloride okay is reabsorbed via the sodium chloride transporter which is sensitive to thiazide diuretics okay so you can you can you can like ignore first the thiazide diuretics part you just remember that about 10 percent of the filtered sodium chloride is reabsorbed via the, the trans sodium chloride transporter okay just know that about 10 percent of the sodium chloride which has been um, filtered okay it came from the pct to the descending loop of Henle, ascending loop of Henle, and then through the DCT now. So in the DCT, about 10% of the sodium chloride is being reabsorbed by the by the, the transporter. Okay. And calcium reabsorption happens by passage through a channel, and then it gets transported by a sodium calcium exchanger into the interstitial fluid. Okay, again into the interstitial fluid. And if we still remember the interstitial fluid is next to the blood, okay, to the capillaries. And so therefore the mechanism is different from that in the loop of Henle. Okay? And furthermore, 
calcium excretion is regulated by the parathyroid hormone here okay so calcium excretion is um, maintained is controlled by the parathyroid hormone in this dct so and then we have the collecting tubule and duct okay the the fifth part the the collecting tubule and duct so the main cells okay the main cells of the collecting tubule and duct the principal cell or the main cells of the collecting tubule and duct controls the sodium um, potassium and water okay sodium potassium and water whereas the um, the intercellated cells intercalated cells affect hydrogen secretion okay hydrogen secretion so sodium enters the principal cells through the channels uh, through channels called the ENAC, yeah? this one ENAC channel, um, the epithelial sodium channels, and this um, these channels can be uh, inhibited by amyloride and trimethyltryptamine. Okay, amyloride and trimethyltryptamine. So this is where amyloride and trimethyltryptamine act upon. So it will block the epithelial sodium channels. Okay, the ENAC, and once in the cell. Okay, sodium reabsorption depends on the sodium potassium ATPase pump, okay, um, which will transport transport the um, sodium back into the into the blood. So, aldosterone receptors, okay, in the in the principal cells, will influence. Okay, so we have. Um, Aldosterone receptors in the principal cells, okay, in the main cells, influence the sodium reabsorption and also the potassium secretion. So the aldosterone receptors, okay, will determine the sodium reabsorption, the rate, and also the also at the same time potassium secretion. Okay, so we have to try to reabsorb sodium because aldosterone is pro, okay, sodium reabsorption. And potassium secretion, okay. Potassium will get um, excreted, and sodium will get um, retained. So aldosterone increases the synthesis of the sodium channels, and also of the sodium potassium ATPase pump, okay. And together they will increase the sodium reabsorption. Okay, antidiuretic hormone receptors (ADH) sub receptors, it, they will support. Okay, it will aid the reabsorption of water from the collecting tubules and ducts. Okay, so this is quite um, a basic fact that I think most um, high school students um, know probably about. So again, a simple diagram from Lip from Lippincott. So we have the PCT. Okay, PCT here. Okay. Um, Bowman's capsule and PCT and then the ascending loop of Henle DCT distal convoluted tubule and then the collecting tubule and duct so so we have glucose amino acid here and then sodium potassium water being reabsorbed in the PCT and then again sodium potassium being reabsorbed okay so chloride in the ascending loop of Henle and then in the distal convoluted tubule sodium and chloride being reabsorbed and then in the Collecting tubule and duct, um, sodium, okay, water being reabsorbed. So here, um, the red ones are secretion, okay. This ones are reabsorption, okay. The ones like grayish, I'm not sure whether it's gray, blue, something gray, okay, grayish, gray, gray, greenish, something like that. So hydrogen here being sec being secreted, sodium and water being reabsorbed. So aldosterone will act here. Okay, here and here it will promote okay the reabsorption of um, of course um, sodium okay and then also the secretion of hydrogen okay so together with sodium of course our water will follow and and then the antidiuretic hormone um, which is antidiuresis antidiuresis means it's not pro diuresis so it's uh, it's it supports or it helps maintain the um, not the non diuresis means it maintains reabsorption. Okay, it helps maintain reabsorption. It's pro reabsorption. So antidiuretic hormone here. So we have water being um, reabsorbed. Okay, and re subsequently may be retained. So another schematic. Okay, of the nephron. 
from the efferent arterial to the glomerulus, efferent, PCT, renal cortex, okay? Renal medulla is this region is the renal medulla. Okay, the descending limb of the Henle, the ascending limb of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, okay, and then we have the collecting duct. Okay, I think that's all for this part. Uh, we'll continue in the next video.